We'll just go ahead and jump in since this should be right around the time limit we have. So I'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to the session on Federal Site Scanning. My name is Nathan Wallace and I'm here with Web First to explore some of the key tools available to ensure compliance for .gov domains. Whether it's accessibility, security, or overall site performance, these tools can welcome. These tools can help keep your domain in line with federal standards and regulations. So thank you for joining me this morning. I've been using Drupal for over 10 years, and at WebFirst I have the privilege of managing technology modernization projects at federal agencies, including Department of Labor, Department of Interior, Department of uh, sorry, Health and Human Services, National Cancer Institute, as well as past engagements at FAA, United States Mint, and the Department of Homeland Security. My work involves ensuring that everything we deliver complies with WCAG standards in Section 508 while enhancing user experience. Which is why I'm excited to be speaking about site scanning today, which is an integral way to measure and track your compliance. All right, to provide a short overview of today's session, we will start by exploring why site scanning matters, then we'll provide a definition of key federal website metrics, followed by a brief overview of security, accessibility, and design tools used in site scanning. Ending with time for QA, hopefully. All right, so why does site scanning matter, and why do we do it? Well, site scanning is a process that ensures that our websites are accessible, user-friendly, secure, and compliant with modern standards. By performing regular scans, we not only adhere to necessary guidelines, but also enhance the overall quality of these digital services. And this, is, and this important set of tools and processes helps us provide this inclusive, reliable, and trustworthy online experience for all users. Also, it's important to note that your .gov is already being scanned by external entities. GSA and DHS both conduct scans across agencies to verify that the standards are being met. So it's important to know what these standards are and how to align with them. Raise your hand if site scanning has had an impact on your role. Okay, so that's about half of the folks. You might not know it, but uh, if you're working on a .gov site, there's a lot of compliance that's happening uh, and other entities that are looking at your site, making sure that it conforms to federal guidelines. Scanning helps us identify and fix accessibility issues, ensuring that all users, including those with disabilities, can access and navigate federal websites. Performing these regular accessibility scans and audits to maintain compliance provides equal access to these users. Also, a positive user experience is crucial for building trust and delivering efficient services. So site scanning helps ensure that design, navigation, and content are user-friendly and meet the needs of your audience. We also use site scanning tools to assess and improve usability of our websites, ensuring they are intuitive, responsive, and meet user needs. Thirdly, protecting sensitive information and preventing cyber security threats is a top priority. So regular security scans also help define vulnerabilities and ensure that federal websites are secure and compliant with security protocols. We conduct, we conduct these continuous security assessments to implement measures to safeguard our websites, ensuring they're resilient against these potential threats, which are very real for government websites. Also, number four, federal websites must be consistent, modern, and accessible across all platforms. So site scanning helps ensure that our digital services are up to date and aligned with these standards to keep our websites current and user-centric. Five, compliance with federal guidelines demonstrates our commitment to transparency and accountability. So we document and share our compliance efforts through regular site scans and the artifacts that scanning produces to ensure to ensure all stakeholders are informed that our websites reflect the values of transparency and accountability. So a very important tool. So whether it's through strategy, UX, CX improvements, or agile development, my focus has always been on fostering collaboration for successful project outcomes. And in terms of site scanning, each of these groups that we see on the slide here focuses on their specific domain, typically, to ensure compliance. So whether it's 
uh, ensuring accessibility and enhancing user experience to maintain content accuracy, security, and legal compliance, even strategic oversight. These stakeholders must all collaborate together to create a compliant, secure, and user-friendly digital environment. Here are some common pitfalls to look out for when working across teams, departments, or agencies, which typically occurs when you're doing site scanning activities. The first is a misalignment of priorities. Different departments may prioritize aspects like accessibility, security, or user experience over others. This can lead to conflicting goals. This misalignment can result in incomplete compliance, affecting the overall user experience and legal standing of your site. Silo processes. Now, when teams work in silos, their, their processes for site scanning may not integrate well with the others, and this causes gaps in compliance and inefficiencies. Silo efforts can lead to duplicate work, missed issues, and a lack of a cohesive strategy. Inconsistent standards. Without a unified approach, different teams might follow varying standards of compliance. This inconsistency can confuse users, weaken the site's credibility, and create vulnerabilities that could have been avoided with a coordinated effort. Communication breakdowns. Poor communication between departments can cause delays, misunderstandings, and a lack of shared understanding. Communication breakdowns can slow down the process of addressing compliance issues. And this leads to not compliance. Lack of strategic oversight. Without leadership alignment and strategic oversight, individual departments may lack direction needed to align their efforts with the organization's overall compliance goals. And this can lead to a fragmented approach. So these are all things that you want to be aware of, and if you see them happening, you know, take action to collaborate with those folks to make your project successful. Here we actually see the shared processes and artifacts across site scanning as an activity. There are significant overlaps in these activities. And to illustrate this, I created a Venn diagram to show the relationships between the areas. Where these areas overlap, we see activities that are common across all disciplines. For example, both accessibility and security involve compliance elements. For example, both in, okay, yes, for accessibility standards and security protocols. Usability is another shared activity between accessibility and design where we ensure that the site is not only accessible, but also user-friendly. Meanwhile, let's see. Meanwhile, both security and design are concerned with performance scanning, making sure that the site is both secure and optimized for speed. So these are some common elements. At the center of the diagram, we find activities that are actually common across all three areas, including regular site scanning and audits, which are essential for identifying issues before they become a major problem, error detection, and reporting. Also, a remediation process is something that's common among all these activities. Consistency checks and monitoring. Additionally, data protection is a concern that's shared by all three, ensuring that data is handled in a way that is both secure and accessible. Recognizing these commonalities allows us to work more efficiently across teams, ensuring that all aspects of the site are addressed in a coordinated manner. And what are these parts that we're talking about? Let's define some of these key federal website metrics. In this section, we'll explore the key metrics that help gauge the performance and effectiveness of our websites. Federal websites serve a critical purpose, having, um, they are typically the primary way citizens actually access information and services when it comes to government. So these metrics are not just numbers, they are indicators of our success in delivering accessible, secure, user-friendly digital services. They help us identify areas of improvement, justify investments, and ultimately ensure that we are meeting the expectations of both the public and regulatory bodies. By tracking and analyzing these metrics, we can make data-driven decisions that enhances the quality of our digital offerings, improves user satisfaction, and ensures that the federal websites continue to serve their intended purpose. So let's take a look. The first is accessibility. So what are we typically scanning for in accessibility? There are four main guiding principles of accessibility upon which WCAG is built. And these four principles are known as the acronym POR. Perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. 
This is what accessibility is concerned with. Oftentimes they're going to scan the content structure of an HTML page, looking at headings, lists, tables, and other structural elements, ensuring they're properly ordered and coded so that they're accessible and available to screen readers. Scans also ensure that all images have appropriate alternative text. That's a big one. Usually a low hanging fruit. Scans also will be checking if the site can be fully navigated by the keyboard, ensuring accessibility. Contrast between text and background colors is often um, scanned and to meet uh, specific WCAG 2.1 standards. Also, forms typically need extra attention so that descriptive labels are pro programmatically associated with their input fields, facilitating ease of use for assistive technology. It's super important for forms as they typically are the way that users are interacting and transacting with your website. So how are we measuring these things? Typically, uh, scans measure how well the site addresses specific conformance to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1 referred to as WCAG, and the AA standard. There's A, AA, and AAA. Typically, your contracts will be asking for WCAG 2.1 AA currently. We also measure the error rate, uh, the number and severity of, severity of accessibility issues identified during scan. And lastly, the remediation process and the time it takes to remediate the issues is often measured as your performance. Let's take a look at security. What is security scanning for? Scan, uh, scans look for known vulnerabilities in your site's code, such as SQL injections, cross-site scripting, outdated software versions. Scans check whether uh, the website is using secure encryption to protect the data in transit. So very important. Scans also verify that only authorized users have access to sensitive areas of the site. Site scans. All sites also are scanned for malicious code or malware uh, that could compromise security. And compliance checks often look at your software components, your plugins, and the entire system to make sure they're up to date and security patches have been applied. What are security folks measuring? They're measuring your threat level. Uh, their scans measure the severity and identify vulnerabilities, the potential risk they pose to your organization. They also measure how closely your site adheres to security standards, such as NIST. Lastly, security is measured by the time it takes to fix identified vulnerabilities, ensuring swift action is taken, usually mandated by the security office. <laughs> Lastly is design and analytics. Now this is uh, becoming more important as USWBS is rolled out more broadly at agencies. And for design and analytics, these scans are typically checking how your website adapts for mobile devices and different screen sizes, also ensuring that your website is going to be working in all browsers. They'll scan how quickly your pages load and the performance of very various elements of your website. And we also bring in analy analytics into this category, and this is where we're going to look at how your users navigate the site and where there's potential bottlenecks, where they might be dropping off. We also do this by scanning SE for SEO best practices, including proper meta tags, keyword usage, and internal linking structure. These are all things that different scanning products and analytics platforms are going to provide you. Super important information. Also, some uh, more higher end platforms are going to provide you with heat mapping, which will actually allow you to analyze where users are clicking, scrolling, helping identify which parts of your design need the most attention. This area is mostly concerned with bounce rates, session durations, and conversion rates to assess how well your site is performing in terms of user interaction, but also USWDS standards. Cool, so that's a little bit of an overview of what the federal website metrics are looking for. We're going to talk about program later, but that's a quick overview. Let's jump into specifically a little bit about security tools. Now, security is the cornerstone of maintaining trust and integrity for federal websites. And as threats evolve, so should our strategies for identifying and mitigating risks. Security scans play a crucial role in this effort, helping to uncover the vulnerabilities that can be exploited. The key objective of security scanning is to detect threats 
and ensure data protection. Raise your hand if you've ever received an email from your CISO or security department that included a very large PDF with hundreds of rows and you were asked to look through that, look through all the criticals, highs, mediums, and lows, and fill your backlog. Okay. So a few folks have had that email. Uh, it comes, you know, periodically throughout the project when they do these scans, and it is not optional to address these uh, issues. So it's very important that you factor this into your projects. There's actually several types of security scans that we rely on to ensure a comprehensive protection. Vulnerability scanning is the most common. Uh, this, again, is gonna help you detect issues in your code or your infrastructure. Another one is penetration testing, also referred to as ethical hacking. This is where you're simulating real-world attacks to uncover potential weaknesses. Compliance scanning. Now, this is where they're gonna ensure that your security measures align with federal standards like NIST, that your security controls, your access management are all in place while configuration scans check for any misconfigurations that can, again, lead to these site vulnerabilities. Together, this creates a layered approach to security. And you will typically be sending your code to a security team for scanning. Some of these top tools include the Burp Suite for penetration testing. Web Inspect provides dynamic application security testing for comprehensive application assessments. SonarCube performs continuous code quality inspections, helping us catch bugs and vulnerabilities easily during the development process. And you also may encounter Nessus, which also excels in vulnerability scanning across networks and compliance, or appliances. A key takeaway is that security compliance is not optional, and it is an external dependency which needs to be planned for. So, very important. Next slide. So what are we measuring? I covered a little bit of this already, but security scans measure a variety of factors for overall safety and security. And they're typically dictated by your agency's security policies and IT guidelines. Whether it's the network, your application code, your server configuration, various tools are employed to provide complete coverage up and down the technology stack. So once you get one of these emails with a 100-page PDF, what do you do? Well, first you identify the issues, then you're gonna be wanting to prioritize high-risk vulnerabilities to ensure critical threats are mitigated first. This is, again, uh, defined in the report. It's gonna say critical, high, medium, or low. There's typically uh, a time frame associated with each of those levels that you're gonna be required to meet. So if it's a critical, typically you're deploying code as soon as you can to hot fix that vulnerability. Highs usually give you until the next release, maybe a couple weeks. Mediums and lows can be negotiated with the security team depending on the, the application. The, yes, again, remediation planning involves developing a strategy to deploy patches and make these necessary configuration changes according to a schedule. That's why working with these folks on the security team or other groups that you work with on the website is super important to align. Continuous monitoring is also essential to make sure that no new vulnerabilities are introduced. Finally, the documentation and reporting are critical for transparency, helping us track our progress and maintain accountability for our security efforts, usually in the form of paperwork that goes into what's called authority to operate ATO. Security scans are gonna be supporting, it's not just about protecting the website, it's also integral into maintaining compliance itself. Federal security standards like NIST and FISMA are required. Importantly, security scans also prepare us for audit readiness by providing detailed reports and evidence that our security measures are effective and up to date. This is a key component to overall risk management and strategy, ensuring that we minimize potential threats and maintain highest levels of security. There's products like DevPanel that also provides additional tools that help you automate scans of your Drupal site for a number of controls so that parts of the ATO process can be automated. So there's new and interesting tools that are really targeting these activities. And it's called DevPanel. Yeah, dev panel. There's actually a 
Um, Sal is here. He can tell you more about it. Um, he's out in the hallway there. So ask Sal about Dev Panel. All right. Here's some best practices that we want to be aware of uh, when we're talking about security scanning. You want to obviously be doing regular scheduled scans. Um, typically, this is uh, done by your development operations workflow. You're going to be scanning new code that goes into staging before it reaches production. But also, there's uh, going to be times where you're going to be scanning your entire network uh, periodically. The next is automated alerts. How do you know there's a problem? Well, you need to have automated alerts going to those folks that need to know and are able to put those into the correct backlog. I mentioned that integrating these security scans into the development process ensures that the code that we build is secure from the ground up. Super important. Cross-functional collaboration is essential. Working with IT compliance and other departments ensures that we address everything comprehensively. So you want to, when you get that email from your CISO, feel free to ask questions. Um, ask them about their policies, ask them about their schedule, and ask them about what the other folks supporting applications elsewhere are doing to meet these uh, requirements. Continuous improvement is, is key. So we scan to continuously refine um, our security measures to stay ahead of these emerging threats, which government websites are highly targeted sites. Let's move into accessibility. Let's explore a few tools here. Raise your hand if you've ever been in charge of running accessibility scans or been tasked with remediation issues. OK. A lot of people have experience with accessibility tools then. Um, so I'm going to go over what these tools do. Uh, I'll mention a few, few of them, but they all uh, serve a similar purpose, right? Uh, these automated tools are going to be checking your website against the WCAG standards. These scans typically assess various elements like your HTML, color contrast, alt text, keyboard navigation, like we had mentioned previously. And these scanning is typically done either in a prod or pre-prod environment that works with the most recent copy of live content so that we know that what we're scanning is the real world thing and not uh, some, something that the user's not going to actually be engaging with. The output of these scans usually is a detailed report highlighting areas where the website does not meet accessibility standards. And this report typically starts with prioritizing the list of issues. Obviously, the most critical deserve the most immediate attention. But these insights really help us focus our efforts on the most significant barriers first so that we address those that have the most impact on accessibility. Most products in the market will calculate a grade, uh, which indicates your compliance. Usually represented as a percentage, this will typically um, be a baseline or a percentage that your agency is targeting. But minimum compliance contractually is typically WCAG 2.1 AA compliance. And that's usually what you're going to configure your site scan to be checking for. So yeah, uh, we have scanning. We also have monitoring. So beyond scanning, we want to be on, having ongoing monitoring so that in the live environment, we're able to detect any changes via a dashboard, right? And we can see week by week, are things going up or down? Are issues being introduced by content managers or code releases that need to be addressed? Being able to make these dashboards available to various functional groups is also a key piece that uh, platforms like Site Improve really excel with. Because these issues need to be addressed by all of the above developers, content managers, and contributors, depending on the issue. Again, the output is a detailed audit, not only identifying the issues, but also the trends over time. So this, this helps us uh, target our efforts leading to real improvement. And by reviewing these reports, uh, we're going to ensure that our sites are continuing to be accessible and consistent and remain compliant. Common platforms, I mentioned Site Improve. Also, Monsego is a leader in this area. Most of these platforms are going to be providing you a browser extension that allows you to go to a page and 
look at the page and see the issues directly on the page. And more premium offerings will actually go beyond web page content and scan your PDFs for inaccessible content that, that has been uploaded to your site. Now this is important to the federal government. So if you're working with an agency that loves their PDFs, come up with a PDF to HTML conversion strategy or something similar to be able to support this content that's typically less accessible when it's inside of PDFs. Once we do all the scans, once we know the state of our application, we're gonna be able to fill out what's called an accessibility conformance report. Let's talk about this. Refer to as ACRs. ACRs are a document that details how a digital product or service meets accessibility standards, like Section 508 or WCAG. These reports are essential for demonstrating compliance. Separate from the scan, you, you fill out this report. And these are often required by federal agencies as well as used globally in government, education, and business-to-business -business contracts. Let's say you want to use Drupal 10 for an agency. Well, you're going to need an ACR that says that Drupal 10 is compliant and accessible. Typically, these are provided in formats like Word or PDF. And while these formats are familiar, they have limitations. And we're going to discuss in a moment more modern tools to develop your ACRs. But fundamentally, an ACR serves as a tool to ensure the accessibility of a digital product. There's uh, two tools out there that you might be interested in looking into. The first is the ATAG report tool. The ATAG report tool is designed to help us assess and report how well our authoring tools are conforming to these standards. So ATAG is a great online tool, check it out. It allows you to create these reports. The next one is Open ACR. So if you were at Mike Gifford's talk, he does some great work in this area. Open ACR is a project that was designed to modernize, modernize how we handle ACRs. I mentioned that ACRs are typically a Word document or a PDF that you're manually filling out. Well, these can be hard to search, hard to update, and only provide a snapshot of a single point in time. Open ACR, uh, their goal is to make ACR's machine readable, and this means instead of a static report, you can have a dynamic, continuously updated document that not only tracks ongoing compliance, but also makes it um, possible to compare different solutions. OpenACR also uses a JavaScript editor that allows users to build and manage ACRs online. So super easy to use, export your document, it gives you YAML and HTML, so you can take that YAML, put it back in, and restart your report from where you left off. Plus, the HTML output can be customized with CSS, allowing for vendors to maintain their branding while ensuring that reports remain easy to compare. OpenACR is a great tool for documenting compliance. And here I've actually included two links you might be interested in. Um, the first is the YAML version of Drupal 10, 10's ACR, and, then, and the other one is the HTML version. So if you go to these links, you'll see Mike Gifford actually was the one who put this together for Drupal 10. And so thank you to Mike Gifford and Civic Actions for all their work in this area on ACRs. Great tool to have in the toolbox. All right, next up. How are we doing on time here? Great, we're doing good on time. All right, let's talk a little bit about design and analytics. Now this is a little bit more of an amorphous category. Uh, few more things going on here. So this gives us the ability to monitor user behavior, assess the effectiveness of our design choices, and ensures that our, visual, uh, our websites are not only visually appealing, but also functionally effective. These tools answer critical questions like, are users finding what they need? Are they engaging with your content? And most importantly, how can we make their experience better? By using the tools and data available, we can gain insights and drive data-driven decisions, ensuring that our digital services are user-centric and optimized for top tasks. Raise your hand if you're using DAP or USWDS on your site today. Okay, 
we have some room to grow up here. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, those tools uh, and how they work with this program. I'm super excited about this. This is the GSA site scanning program. And this program is designed to automatically generate comprehensive data on a wide range of metrics and train that all federal websites keep their digital services compliant. Let's look at this specific program and the types of data that it collects and how it's used in government. All right, the mission. Threefold. First, the program is committed to developing and publishing the only known authoritative list of public federal government websites. So that's the first thing you can do it do with it is see a full list of all the sites. Second, the government aims to provide a comprehensive analysis of the public federal web presence. This analysis is not just about compliance, it's about understanding how federal websites are performing, identifying areas of improvement, and ensuring that these digital platforms effectively serve the public. Finally, the program delivers business intelligence to the technology transformation services programs, which is another government program. This intelligence supports strategic decision making and helps drive improvements across federal services. All right, a little bit of a breakdown of what you're going to see in this data. To understand the scale of the program, let's take a look. As of June, which is when I updated this slide, there was approximately 28,965 websites a part of this program. These uh, scan across 1,440 domains. And, and this allows us to see trends across agencies. 148 agencies are currently participating, and this is a testament to the collaborative nature of the initiative, bringing together federal agencies from all sectors to participate in a unified effort. There's actually 90 data points that are a part of each site scan. And these data points provide the foundation of the insights and reports generated by the program. These data points actually continue to be refined by the GSA team, including uh, to include the most relevant and available data. For instance, they currently are discussing which meta tags to include in this report based on which ones are most used across government. Ultimately, this program supports long-term strategic planning for federal digital services. I think I covered most of these already, but these are some of the high-level aspects that the digital uh, .gov site scanning program is going to provide to you. So again, just a list of the sites. It actually tracks in a few different ways how many USWDS components that you have on your website. Are there classes present for the USWDS? Are you using DAP? It also lists any third-party scripts or services that you're using on your website will be listed in a kind of separated um, value field. And it's also going to check various aspects of the 21st century idea clients, IPv6, HTTPS, and it's also going to indicate some details about your network, whether it's on the CDN, what kind of CMS it's currently being run off of. So how does all this site scanning work through this program? Well, actually, every week they just publish a CSV of all the data. So super easy to get your hands on this. They also have an API that you can leverage, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I think if you had a chance to see Mike Gifford's talk on Tuesday, he talked a lot about this data and what he's doing with it. And there's a lot of fun things happening. So the government uses this data for various different purposes. The first is to check who currently is using DAP, which is supposed to be a requirement at different agencies. They're going to be tracking the implementation of OMB 2322. I mentioned that the TTS uses these metrics to make uh, decisions about IT procurements and tool usage. GSA is primarily concerned with folks using DAP and USWDS, right, per their guidelines. SEO is, is also a part of this, so you're going to be able to see and compare SEO practices across agencies. 
lot of great stuff and a lot of other uh, tools that I'm going to mention in a moment that want off of this data. But again, why do we do the site scanning? Well, there's policy that supports these activities, and it's super important. So we can see that uh, they, they're suggesting that GSA operates as a website scanning service, right, via policy, both in OMB M22.9 and the Zero Trust Strategy. So GSA, which is actually working collabor collaboratively with CISA, uh, measures a variety of these important properties. And the approach is guided by these significant policy documents. So super important. And not just that, but... All right, yep. So these are a number of other uh, different memorandum or acts or executive, executive orders that are gonna be really promoting the use of these best practices. Uh, again, the first one, M176, this is the uh, policies for federal agency public websites and digital services. Again, they're pushing the use of USWDS on uh, federal websites. While not mandated, USWDS is highly suggested as the approach to build your application. 508 compliance obviously is law, very important to comply with this and the executive orders on transforming uh, federal customer experience as well is really driving us to further embrace these standards. One of the key pieces to this is the digital analytics program, which I mentioned. Uh, this is a different program that is also a wide initiative that collects data and analyzes the web traffic of federal websites. It's actually based on Google Analytics 4, so if you're using DAP, probably familiar with uh, Google Analytics. But how is this relevant to site scanning? DAP isn't just about tracking clicks or page views. It's about understanding the effect effectiveness of your website structure, content, and overall experience. And when combined with site scanning tools, DAP data can help identify areas where our websites may not be performing optimally. For instance, if DAP reports show a high bounce rate on a certain page, site scans like Screaming Frog can reveal technical issues such as missing metadata, broken links, or schema markup errors that could be contributing to the problem. So it's also important to use all the data that's available to you to make these assessments. Another great tool, if you are in government, you may have access to this. You need a PIV card. It's digital-board.gov a platform that provides federal agencies with a comprehensive understanding of their website performance and compliance. It's designed to offer detailed insights into how federal websites can adhere to OMB directives, best practices. It's another tool for agencies aiming to monitor and improve effectiveness in their digital presence. Also, government-wide reports offer a broad view showing how agencies across the government are complying with key directives. This overview helps in benchmarking performance and identifying areas where government-wide improvements are needed. Agency-wide reports and website-specific reports and data discovery capabilities make this platform an easy-to-use resource for government teams. So I highly suggest check this out. Okay, all right. Lastly, I actually developed a module that takes the site scanning API and puts it in Drupal. So on, again, on Tuesday, if you were able to catch Mike Gifford's discussion about data analysis of Drupal and government, you may be interested in exploring this further. Similar to digital-dashboard.gov, doc, digital the digital.gov site scanner module is an open source Drupal project, which integrates with the GSA site scanning API to ingest and save scan results in Drupal. The screenshot showcases aggregated results, providing a visual representation of key metrics such as DAP usage and content management distribution across an agency, which is displayed as a pie chart. 
The module's filtering capabilities allow us to do a more detailed analysis of the agency or department level, making it easier to pinpoint areas that need attention. So it's a fun little tool, it's open source, check it out. So that's a quick overview of all these different aspects of site scanning. And we're gonna be thanking the sponsors. So, all right, that's it. Again, thank you for joining me. Before we uh, open the floor for questions, I'd like to take a moment to express the gratitude to this year's sponsors. Their support truly energizes our community. So we appreciate all the incredible companies involved this year, and thank you for being a part of this event. So yeah, I think there's a few minutes for questions, so if there's one or two, we can take them. Do you have numbers in the pie chart? Uh, numbers on the pie chart. Uh, I think the current module does not display. I think if you hover over the pie chart, it actually does show a percentage, not a number. But that's what we need the uh, contributors for to help us build that out. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. In the back there. Yeah, that's right. You need a project leader, uh, maybe a, a project manager, a program manager that's going to be able to have rapport with different stakeholders across the agency. Um, like I said, security is typically not optional. They've got their own processes, uh, but they're not going to do your application work for you. So they're just going to tell you what the problems are and send you a report, usually tell you when you need to fix them by. Uh, so you want to be friends with security. Buy them cookies. Get to know them because <laughs> they're going to be able to help you, you know, navigate how to remediate the issues or even document the issues that you have. Um, accessibility champions is super important. Those content people having training in these areas is super critical. Accessibility, security, data protection—these are all shared responsibilities that everyone on a team working on a website should be trained on. So I think that's it's critical that. There's a culture of, you know, sharing information and sharing best practices, and that comes down to making sure your team is trained. Yeah. But I think that's that's what I'd say. To reinforce what Nathan's saying is, from experience, is setting up recurring uh, meetings to communicate. Um, as an example, um, I'm the web lead for HHS, and I have recurring meetings with infrastructure team, which includes the CISA, accessibility, I've got the content team, um, among others. So we're always communicating, we always share information to ensure everything's in compliance. Um, it can be daunting, but once you establish that and get that before, you'll find out that it really helps in moving forward. And, uh, being able to have that communication as we go through, I've got my infrastructure uh, cohort in the back of the room. We just we just been going through our annual renewal process, and I've got my design team leads here, and we just got a report back this morning for our applications. We passed the final coverage for everything. So having that go through everything, you know, it's it's one thing to really talk about that team collaboration. It's essential, especially with the complexity of everything. As Nathan talked about the different um, aspects with the, I'm um, part of the digital experience working group. So all these metrics, they're actually getting reevaluated right now with OMB 23, 22 coming out. So we're looking at um, how these metrics are going to be Evaluated, so they're looking at U.S. WDS with the word compliance. Even if you want to start stuff out, on the website. That's a critical action. They're looking at um, accessibility markup to make sure things are tagged properly and different metaphors. So all that is being in, taken into consideration. So the recent guidelines are. Um, 
really a big player. USWDS, if I remember correctly in the memo, is um, one of the mandates. So if you're not on that, get on it. USWDS is a player. So uh, I know for us, we use Pattern Lab, and they said we weren't using it. And I raised the flag and said, just because the USWDS team is on Storybook and they're on version 3, whatever, doesn't mean we've got to reevaluate the metric. So there's a lot of discussions going on uh, amongst the federal teams. So um, I recommend that you pay attention to some of the information that may be provided because it's going to be essential for everybody who's moving forward. Yeah, please reach out, come, come stop by and say hi to me. I don't think we have too much more time for questions. So the short answer is get you with Kelly to help out with the project. <laughs> and you'll be going. But yeah, like I said, meet me outside if you want to talk more about compliance and these different tools and processes. I'm happy, happy to be talking more about it all day today. Thank you.